Good morning. Good to see many of you make it through this rain and cloudy, and someone said there was some sleet. Did y'all experience some of that? Some of you? Oh, some of you did, huh? Okay. Well, so good that you uh, made it through all the changes, the daylight saving times, and you was awake, up and ready to go. You didn't set your backward. You, you, you didn't set it backward. You set it forward. <laughs> and uh, everything else that's happening, okay? But good to see everybody this morning, all right? Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Lord, we are so thankful this morning that you have called us to come together and to worship you, to sing praises to your name, to hear the word of God, and to find strength for another day, another moment. That's why we fellowship. That's why we come into your presence. We gain that strength. We gain that hope and that confidence that you are a living God and a God that is interested in us. Father, we also pray this morning for uh, those who are in our military and those the first responders and our law enforcement people and our government, whether local and, and higher up, we pray for them. We pray for their families. We pray for safety and for those who are in harm's way uh, fighting for this country. We pray for those that are refugees, those are, that are dealing with the border issue, and those that are in Ukraine and Africa and in many parts of the world where people are scattered and, uh, because of uh, dispersion or because of persecution. Whatever the reasons are, Lord, you know what's going on. But we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us no matter what the situation, you call us to be a shining light, be a hope for those that don't know you and those that do know you. We pray, Lord. We pray for those that are sick. We know there are members in our church that are going through some sickness, and we pray for the criners with Shirley and, and J.L. Trogdon, Denzel, and, and, and Mike Spells, and some of the others that Livy Thorne, and there are others that are having some health issues. We ask you to be with them and bless them and bring them to healing. Bless our service today and all who was able to come. We pray this in the name of Jesus and we give you thanks. Amen. Please follow the bulletin and as we stand in him, there's the fountain.
good to have you here this morning in the rain and snow and the sleet. Uh, I made that up, I think. <laughs> um, what is our Bible verse for this month? The month of March? Ah, there it is. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us recite that together. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. That's my sermon text this morning. Amen? Praise God. Would you give each other greetings? Please stand and feel free to do that as you feel comfortable to doing it. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Doing fine. How you doing? Doing great. Good to see you. How's Kevin? Oh, he's doing great. Kevin. No, they did. Did they make that dog? <laughs> How much was that?
The election should be decided within the next two weeks. Keep it here on Channel 5. We will keep you up to date, where our news is always live, local, and leg breaking. And now let's go to the weather with Chip Chipperson. Chip, please tell us you've got some good news for us. We do have some good news, Hank. We have a jet stream that's reached all the way up to Canada, and it's pushed its way all the way back to us, which means we have some great weather over the next few days. Ah, oh, it's going to be wonderful. We've got some other good news for you too, Hank. Nope. What's that? The good news of the gospel. Wanna to come to church with me? Well, um, that is um, always good to get good news and that weather is fantastic news. Thank you, Chip. Hank, you're avoiding the subject. What do you have to lose besides your pagan lifestyle? Oh, uh. In our, our next story, it seems that a, uh, a, lo a local man has uh, found a litter of puppies and is looking for a home for them. It's time for you to come on home too, Hank. Home to the house of the Lord.
seated. Good morning, everybody. The time changed. <laughs> Pastor Harrison will now bring us the message. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, that song, how many have heard that song before? Baptists, y'all haven't heard it? <laughs> That's one of the most beautiful songs. Has a really touching flavor to it. It, it just, it just, Deborah and I, that's one of our favorites, and um, it sort of grips the heart to let you know that whatever you're going through in this whole crazy world, it, it won't last long. When you get to heaven, when you get where the Lord is, all of this will be nothing. You won't even think about this. So this, this song is so powerful. And it just sort of like, make me want to shout. How that song go? Make me want to shout. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. That's enough choir. <laughs> but it's good to be here this morning with you, and uh, no greater joy for me and to be able to share God's words with you. And for those of you who are listening, and wherever you might be, I pray that the message today will, will touch you in some way to connect you with God. That, that's the whole purpose of the message, is to connect you in some way to God. But I'd like for you to start with me in the book of uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. If you recall, last week we was in the fourth chapter of Hebrews, and the theme pretty much of last uh, week's sermon centered around the word rest, God's rest, and um, how, you know, that we need God's rest, and, and God is inviting us to do that. And it, we talked a little bit about uh, that it's, it's not what we do for God, but what God has already done for us and the provisions in which he has, he has made, for, made for us. So let's read here um, the, the, the um, word of God here, starting with chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we pro profess. Did y'all get that? Since we have a great high priest, so important. So important that we have one who not only represents us, but speaks in our behalf. Let me finish reading it. Well, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. Hold on to that word. Circle it. Weakness. All right? But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet, well, without sin. Amazing. Can you name a human being that's without sin? Can you name a pope that's not without sin? Can you name any human ever lived in this world from the beginning to now who lived without sin except one? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Now, that makes him a great high priest because the rest of us, we just don't have it. Let me finish. It says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may, we may receive two words here. Mercy. What's the other? Grace. Find grace. Mercy and grace. That's what your salvation is, is, is based on. Our salvation is not based on our good works or what we do for the church, or what we think we are doing for God, and many things we think we are doing for God, God has nothing to do with it. It is based solely on mercy and grace. Pray with me. Lord God Almighty, the God who created the heavens, the earth, Psalms 24 says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it and all who lives in it for he forms it upon the seas and established upon the water. The earth belongs to God Almighty. It is you that we stand, O Lord, in need of prayer, in need of forgiveness in need of restoration, in need of reconciliation. We stand in the presence of the living God who is merciful to all who call on him. Hear our prayers. Forgive us of our sins and receive us in this place of worship. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there's two verses I didn't have in the text for today, but I, I, need to, I need to go back to these two verses to sort of pull, pull you in into the text and the scripture today, okay? And starting with verse 12, the word of God is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges. The word of God judges, okay? It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid wide open, bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now, why is this so important? The sermon titled, The Throne of Grace. Why is this so important? Because here, the verses prior to verses 14 to 16 talks about the word of God. It talks about the spoken word of God. It said that the word of God is so powerful. If you go to the book of Psalms 29, It said, the voice of the Lord is powerful. But here, the word of God is so powerful that it dissects the heart. It exposes us. We live in a society, we live in a world today where we let bits and pieces of who we are to our fellow man but the word of God have already exposed us. The word of God has already exposed our hearts. We all stand in the presence of God disrobed. That's how we stand in the presence of God. And as you look at the heart, Scripture says the heart is deceitful above everything. Who can understand it? Some of you have had heart surgery, including myself. The doctor opened you up, put another valve in there, I guess. But he also lays your heart on a table. You're literally dead. (laughs) But you can't dissect it. You don't know what's in it. Not, 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 I'm talking about the, here I'm talking about the physical heart comparing to the spiritual heart. Jesus often talked about the heart and what comes out of our mouth is a sure example of what's in the heart. Now that's not good news. Because all of us have said some things that came out of our mouth that even the angels have to put their ears to. Yeah. Scripture sometimes lays lay us wide open that we don't look pretty good. We, we look good in church. We look good to our neighbors. But Scripture has a way of telling us who you really are. But you know something? Some good news. You know why it's some good news? Because no matter who you are, what you might have in your heart, what you have done in the past, what you might do in the present, or even what you might do in the future. Here's the good news. Jesus Christ is your high priest. Think about that. Jesus Christ is your and my high priest. Then what does the priest do? What does the priest do? Jesus Christ, the scripture tells us that in in, 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 in this verse, that Jesus Christ, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, 
Did you know there are different layers of heaven? When you look up the sky, that's one part of heaven. You can see the clouds. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and I believe in verse 2, he said that he went into a place called paradise. And what he witnessed there, he was not even able to talk of it. Maybe because he didn't have the words for it. He called it paradise. It was such a place that there was no human language for it. So he couldn't say anything about it. Do you think that's what heaven going to look like? Do you believe that heaven is going to be a place that in human terms we have no words for it? I believe so. But here, Jesus Christ has already gone far beyond the place that Paul talked about. He done gone into the heavens of heavens. That's what makes him a great high priest because he was without sin. He was the only human creature that ever lived that was able to go into the heavens and explode the heavens itself. Man, I get excited when I think about that. The heavens itself crumbles and roars. But Jesus Christ, after the word of God exposes us for who we are, Jesus Christ says to you and me, I am your great high priest. Now, I don't know if I should have gotten an amen for that. Come on, Baptist. <laughs> you say amen when Jesus Christ, who became your high priest, knows all about you. God doesn't set up there judging you. God has made provision to save you. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you. Psalms 139 says, paraphrasing a little bit, God, you know my thoughts afar. You're acquainted with all of my ways. You know my going and my coming. You know my ups and my downs. You know when I sit down. You know when I rise up. You know all about me. The word of God exposes us. Now, we can take two attitudes. We can take the attitude that since I've been discovered, <laughs> I can walk around in shame. I can walk around in guilt. Or I can take the other attitude, simply saying, thank you, Jesus, for loving me for who I am. I can take that attitude. That's the one the Bible offers. That's the one the scripture offers. That's the one that Jesus offers us. He has accepted you for who you are. Some of you in this world, you're not going to change. You're not going to change. I'm not going to change in some area. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, because not because I don't want to, but there's something in me that won't let me change. It's something in you won't let you change. If you're honest with yourself, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has accepted every bit of you. In this world, people judge you. They make they they make choices about you. And you can believe some of it if you want to. Or you can just dismiss it. But the great thing we have here, and you've heard me say this over and over again, that in God's court, God has a court. And every one of us would have to give an account. That's what it says in the Word. Every one of us have to give an account. We will have to go to court. 
And when we go, we have to go by ourselves. You've seen court cases where individuals decide that they were going to speak for themselves and not use a lawyer. We recently saw that on television in a big publicized situation. But that was not good. That is never good. In this life, you need an attorney. You need somebody who knows the law. You need someone who's familiar with the judge. Okay? (laughs) You need someone to know the language of the judge and what the judge is looking for. You go and represent yourself, you are incriminating yourself. (laughs) You need a lawyer. The same as for God. God, Jesus Christ, is our court attorney. He stands before the Father. Forgiven. 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 That's what he says. You're exonerated. You're not going to be judged because Jesus Christ is our turn. Scripture also says something else here that's very important. It said that he sympathizes. In the old time, Old Testament time, the priest was given a job to offer sacrifice for those who had come, who had sinned, and they carried out their responsibility. But you know what they lacked? They carried out their response, but you know what they really lacked? They lacked sympathy. They knew how to carry out the law. They knew how to, 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 uh, to do for, for absolution or, or confession of sins. They knew how to do that, but they didn't know what the people were feeling. The priest did not know why the person would do the same thing over and over again. He didn't understand that he only made a a sacrifice for their sins, but he didn't understand. You want to hear some good news today? If any of y'all are beating yourself up, Jesus understands you. He understands why you keep doing the same thing over and over again. And guess what else? He still forgives you. You ask yourself why you keep doing the same thing over and over again. Why don't it ever go away? I was talking to a friend this past week, and he was struggling with something. And that he told me that he had heard and he had read different books on different things, and this problem that he has, it really keeps him in the dark. It keeps him from living. And the only thing he thinks about more than anything, instead of God's grace, he thinks about how bad he is. He prays. He fasts. But this one monster never leaves him. He doesn't understand why. I finally said to him, have it ever occurred to you that perhaps that monster that you have inside of you is supposed to be inside you. Have it ever occurred to you that maybe God refused to remove this monster in your life is because it keeps you humbled. It keeps you to be sympathetic when other people are going through their junk. You can't brag about you. You can only have sympathy for them. Jesus Christ was here on this earth. He knew what human beings went through, yet he was not sin. The guy who tried to do a 40-day fast and died. Yeah. He was going to try to be like Jesus. You can't do that. You you try a 40-day fast and you'll die. In most cases, if you you got bad health, you got a bad heart, I wouldn't wouldn't advise it, okay? Because you're gone. You can't blame it on God. Instead, you did a good deed for God. 
People blame stuff on God all the time. God has nothing to do with it. I can hear God say, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Why are you talking to them, telling them people that you know, I did? When God told me, God does speak. Jesus Christ is a high priest. He understands you. Your children may not understand you. Your wife may not understand you. Your husband may not understand you. But guess who understands you? Jesus. He knows what you are going through. He's been there. Yet he did not succumb to sin. That's the difference. What makes him a great high priest? Because he was sinless. He was one who was in it, but he never got stuck in it. You see, see, Jesus can be sympathetic with us, but he never gets stuck in the sympathetic. When we, get, when we find ourselves being sympathetic with someone, we end up taking on the whole problem. <laughs> it's no longer sympathy. Their problem used to be theirs, now it's mine. Jesus doesn't get stuck, did not get stuck in, in sympathizing with us in terms of that. He sympathized with us, but he didn't stay there. He understands you. One of the greatest joy in my life, when I feel confused, I wake up feeling really bad like yesterday morning. I really felt bad. I don't know why. You didn't do anything to me. <laughs> she didn't say anything to me. But one of those moment, mornings that you ever had one of them, you just got up and you just felt bad? Guess what? Your preacher was feeling that yesterday. I mean, I was feeling it bad. I got down on my knees. I said, what's with this, Lord? He didn't say anything. I talked to myself. I listened to myself talk. As I was talking, all of a sudden, a quietness came. A calmness came. And almost a voice like it said, shh, be quiet. And listen. Listen to yourself. And listen to me. Did you know, after I heard that voice, all the, all the craziness that I was feeling just left? I'm telling you a story that is true. I'm not lying to you. I sat there listening and watching out of the window, and all of a sudden, saying these little prayers, and all of a sudden, all the anxiety that I was feeling just left. And I was a human being again, <laughs> laughing and joking and being my old self. She you knows. God understands you. He knows you. He loves you. This is why in verse 16 it said that we can approach the throne of grace. That's one of my favorite verses. I've memorized it for years. You know, even before we uh, were reciting it for the monthly... Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us come boldly. Whatever the problem is, let's come boldly. Why? Because you have a great high priest who has gone into the heavens, who now sits at the right hand of God, who make intercession for us. God is praying for us. Jesus is praying for you. That's his job. That's what he does. When you and I can't get it right, when you and I want to get it right, but we just can't get it right, there's something inside of us that just won't let us get it right. Jesus has already been praying for you and you in his grace and mercy. And that's good news. Because when I look at the frailty of human beings, when I look at my own frailty, we're all at the mercy of God. I don't see how human beings can walk around I'm just going to say this. I don't see how some Christians can walk around and think that they are better than anyone else. God's word tells me 
in Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are you saved. Not of yourself. It is a gift from God so that nobody can boast about their righteousness. It comes from God. How do we continue to manifest this relationship with God? We come to the throne of grace. Do you go to the throne of grace? Do you get down on your knees and confess your sins? Do you con- well, you know, Pastor, I don't go out and do all this thing, but no, 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 no. You're still a sinner. <laughs> You're still a sinner. You confess to God your weaknesses. You confess to God your fear. You confess to God your doubt. You confess to God everything about you because he knows it and because the throne of God is there for you. It's a place of confession. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our what? Sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All of that, that's done in the heavens. What all of that means, I do not know. All I do know is that I can confess my sins to God and he cleanses me. That I understand a little bit. That's it. The rest of it is done in God's domain. It is done in a place where only God brings confession or or forgive people of their sins. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find mercy. We can come in confidence. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, go in confidence. Tell the Lord about it. No matter what secrets that you've been carrying or what pain you've been carrying for years, go to the throne of grace and lay it out before the Lord. He knows. The work of salvation is already done. The work of healing is already done because he knows you. We have an advocate in God's court. We have an advocate. We got somebody already there pleading and and, and representing you. Your your, your lawyer is already there. Good news for sinners since We all are sinners. Good news for all of us. Right? This is good news. This ain't something that you have to worry about and carry with you in this life because you know by God's word and what Jesus has done, you are forgiven. You have to accept it. You have to accept that gift and bring it into your life. You have to state claims on it by committing yourself to the Lord and by giving your life to the Lord and allowing the Lord to work in your life. You have to state that claim on it. It's yours. But just because you get it, you still got to live in this old crazy world. You still got to face temptation. You still have to face the anger that you have inside you. You still have to face the demons that you've been born with or carried with. Your salvation, because of God's grace and power, give you the victory, but you still have to live. That's where the throne of grace comes. Because when we are not living up to what God wants us to do or be, we can always go to the throne of grace. Like someone said, Lord, help me. 
Did you know that's all you have to say sometimes? God don't want to hear no long spills and, you know, Lord, let me get down. Let me... No, no, no. Lord, help me in this situation. That's been my prayer. That's what, that's what my daddy said. He said one, two words, Lord, let me count it. Lord, have mercy on, how many words is that? Five? Five. <laughs> but I remember his five words. Have mercy on me. Where's my daddy today? He's at the mercy of God. Didn't he ask for the mercy when he was here? Why would God turn away the mercy when he left here? Wasn't he dependent upon God's mercy even though he was not a perfect individual? He was not a perfect man. He realized his sin and the only thing he can cry out is, Lord, have mercy on me. God never turns a person away when they ask for his mercy. I'm going to see my daddy one day. I said, Dad, mercy. Number three, what do we expect when we go to the throne of grace? We expect mercy. We expect grace. That's what you can receive. God is not going to charge you. He's not going to make you feel bad. Now, now, when you pray, the devil is also there too. Okay? He, he, he don't want you to pray in the first place. But if you decide to pray, he's going to join you if he can. See? The devil will come and whisper some things while you're praying to the good Lord. And that's this battle going, the spiritual battle that's taking place right in front of you. You don't know it. But the devil is there too, giving you doubts. God's not going to answer your prayers. He's not going to change. You've been praying for him for 10 years, and look at it. You've been praying for him 50 years, and look at it. Or look at her. Look at my children. Been praying for him for years. They haven't changed. The devil will tell you there's no need to pray. And guess what we do? We start praying, and we buy into the lie. We literally buy into the lie. When we, when we say you're going to pray for, keep praying. If you keep praying, that means that that's God's job to do it, not you. You can't fix it. God is the only one that can fix the problem, not you, not your humanness. And so often we try to do it, and we get nowhere. But when you go to God and to his throne, you find mercy. You know what mercy is? And God, I, I like uh, 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 Psalms chapter 103 verses, uh, I believe it's verse 14 to 12. But it says this, that God remembers that we are dust. Yeah. He has compassion on us. As a father has compassion for his, for his children, so God has compassion for those who place their faith and trust in him because he remembers that we're made of dust. That's why we can go to God Almighty and trust him because he knows us. That's a good feeling. Others may not know you. Others may not even care to know you. God knows you. He loves you. He's accepted you. Even when you don't accept yourself, he has already accepted you. Grace. Unmerited favor. A gift of salvation to us that God grants us even when we deserve the, be the worst. That's what grace is. Unmerited favor. Mercy. Compassion. God of mercy and a God of grace. A God of mercy means he's compassionate. A God of mercy, a grace, is a God who has shown you favors. Not holding it against you. 
This morning we come to the Lord's table, the Lord's supper. You know why we come? Not because it's a thing we do annually or every other month or, 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 or you know, I've, I've been in some churches where they do it every week. Really, communion. We do it maybe once a quarter. But you know something? It doesn't matter when you do it. It doesn't matter if you did it once a year. You know what's important? That you come to the Lord's table. What's important is that you recognize that what God has done in Jesus Christ for you and me, we cannot do for ourselves. We come to the Lord's table because we are broke. It reminds us of God's grace. It reminds us of God's love. We come to the Lord's table because we are saying, in essence, have mercy on me, O Lord. That's what you're saying. And guess what Jesus does? He don't say, you can't come because you ain't clean. You can't come because your hands are dirty. You can't come because you don't have the right clothes or you're from the not the right family or the right race. You know what he says? All human beings he has created in his image can come and eat at his table with dirty hands, raggedy clothes, smelly. It doesn't matter. We come to the Lord's table in humility not of self-righteousness. We come in our hearts crying for mercy because we have sinned. And we know we have. I'm not talking about every day. I'm just saying as, as a sinner, we are pickled in sin. <laughs> so whether we want it or not, it comes out. So we come to the Lord's table this morning recognizing what Jesus done for and all we can say is, thank you. And like my daddy said, have mercy on me, O oh Lord. I want y'all to take my daddy's phrase out. When you're, going, when you're driving, when you're driving down Hope Mills Road, <laughs> or you get on 95 and people are slow, just say, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray. Almighty God, Scripture warns us that your word is more powerful, that it dissects the soul, the spirit, the marrow of the bone. It brings convictions, and it reminds us that we have to give an account to an almighty God. It reminds us how, how corrupt we are, but at the same time, the solution to that corruption is that Jesus Christ, your son, have paid a price for us. He died on the cross, he was buried, and he was resurrected so that we might have eternal life. That's the message. And we come to celebrate what he's done for us by preparing our hearts, confessing our sins, and eating at his table today. Lord, receive your children who come. Receive all those. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll have the ushers to help me with the uh, communion, please. Uh, do I have an usher? <laughs> Ronnie? Yeah. Carl, that, that's good. Um, now, you have in your pews, if I'm not mistaken, you have the communion set already attached. I also would like to offer the opportunity for those who struggle with those little things and spill it on your suits and stuff. Um, we have... The bread, and we have 
the grape juice. You can select all of those who wish to receive it from, from the trays. Please raise your hand when the, when the deacons, are t- when, when, the, when those who are serving. So they're going to get the trays. I'm going to give it to them, and they're going to turn around after I have a prayer. Those of you who wish to take it by hand or those who wish to remain as it concealed, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come to your table, Lord, not because of our own righteousness, but because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Receive us now as we receive this this bread and this drink as representative of your blood that you shed for us. And Jesus died and was buried and resurrected. We ask this, forgive us of our sins, where we have sinned and and where we have harbored things. We ask for this moment, at this particular time, to forgive us and that we may receive this to the best we know how. In the name of Jesus, amen. Anyone wishing to, to, to receive the communion, please raise your hands. Run, run. Also, the drink, you got the drink? Anyone else wishes to? Lord Jesus Christ, on the day that he was buried, on the day he took bread with his disciples, and he broke it and said, this is my body. Do this and eat this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread together. We pause for a moment to give God thanks for his dying on the cross for our sins. In the same way he took the cup and said, this is my blood. Drink this and do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Receive the prayer of confession and forgiveness. Oh Lord, we stand at your presence, at your table dining with you today. We come not, Lord, because we are righteous, but we come because of your mercy and grace only. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins and what Christ has done for us. Receive us at this table, and we thank you for your food of grace and mercy and forgiveness. Empower us to live for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's stand for the invitational hymn. up and pray or you have a commitment to Christ or join the church whatever the Lord is leading you to do you are welcome to come today this is God's house God's people and you are welcome princes and powers sons and daughters yes kneel at the throne Kneeling at the throne of grace. Anyone today would like to Losers join me? And winners, Anyone sick and among us today? Anyone that's troubled with you today? Today, anybody today? Anybody today? Would you come? Is the Spirit of God working in your heart today to come? No matter what the situation, what the problem is, will you come? Will you come and say, Yes, Lord? Summer and winter, the mountains and the rivers whisper the same. Awesome and holy, a friend to the lonely, forever his love will reign and will all bow down. And kings will surrender their crowns and worship be seated. Will the ushers please come forward? God, God has given to us in abundance. And we will give back to him in the same way. We can find a plate. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> Let us pray. Our loving Father, oh Lord, we come into your very presence this morning, Lord. We give you thanks for the cross. 
resurrection. For Jesus Christ, the blood was shed to cleanse our hearts and our souls. Now we pray that you will bless each one here and whatever you have laid on their heart to return back to your kingdom that they will abide by. In Jesus' most precious holy name we pray. Amen. The ladies' prayer group will meet here in the uh, classroom uh, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. All ladies are invited. Bring your Bibles. The outreach mission team will meet this Tuesday follow at 10 o'clock right after the ladies' prayer group, and they will also meet back here in the uh, classroom. The Bible study is at 3.30 Wednesday afternoon, led by Pastor Harrison. The uh, questions are back there on the welcome table. Pick them up. Come join us. It is awesome. I have been advised by Gerald that we will have the Bible study back here in the classroom because there's a heating situation. So everybody, when you come in, just come and go back here in the, in the uh, classroom uh, for the Bible study. And it's at 3.30 Wednesday afternoon. The quarterly church conference will be held on Sunday, March the 26th, following the worship service. And again... Please pray about the church clerk. We need two people to volunteer to be the church clerk. My understanding is that they, they will take notes during the conference. They will keep a record of the attendance here and in the Sunday school class. And that is taken by other people here. So you would just have to return, pick up the numbers and take it uh, to Wanda. It's not as complicated as it is sound. So pray about it and come on and volunteer. Missing, a red cooler is missing from the fellowship hall. It was left outside for a food service company to pick up. If anyone has seen it, please contact the church office. And now will you please stand and receive the benediction from Pastor Harrison. Receive the benediction May the God of all grace, the God of all mercy, the God of compassion and love surround you this day. May it follow you throughout the week. May your life be enriched with joy and happiness and peace. Go in peace, and the God of peace will always be with you. Have a wonderful day and a week to come. God bless you.